Hey there, I know that you're here because you desire to chase purpose. And if your purpose has led you down the path of becoming an aspiring or rising speaker, podcaster, coach, educator of some kind, who wants to expand your impact, inspire the masses, increase your authority, and yes, elevate your income in the process, then I have something for you. I'm hosting a free webinar called Speak With Purpose on Thursday, February 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern. I'll teach you why you absolutely have a story to tell and the reasons not knowing how to tell it are costing you big time. You'll also learn the anatomy of any transformational speech. Without these five core elements, your talks, presentations, webinars, interviews, it's falling flat and it's lowering your conversion rate in a big way. And you'll also learn how to command the stage. Yes, the exact way you can use your life experience or professional expertise to speak with authority, captivate your audience, attract a tribe, and grow your platform exponentially. If this is speaking to you, then I want to see you on Thursday, February 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern. Register for the free webinar, Speak With Purpose, at patricewashington.com forward slash SWP. That's patricewashington.com forward slash SWP. And I can't wait to train you on how to speak with purpose. So it's not how your mama define love. It's not how your pastor define love. Not even how society define love. How do you define love? And how do you want to show up in your relationship because of that? Hey there, this is Patrice Washington from patricewashington.com, where we chase purpose, not money. Welcome back to another special bonus episode of Redefining Wealth. So ordinarily, we only drop one episode a week, but this week in honor of National Entrepreneurship Week, we are highlighting amazing, amazing women entrepreneurs from my community, Purpose to Platform, because... One, they're brilliant and I want to share them with the world. And two, I truly believe that something special happens when women tap into their God-given gifts. There's like no force like it when you are actually walking in purpose. And if you're new to redefining wealth and you've just stumbled across this podcast, here's the deal. Typically, we release episodes every single Thursday and redefining wealth is all about understanding that wealth is so much more than money and material possessions. Wealth is about well-being. And we really aim to be fulfilled in different areas of our life in this community. And one of those areas is what we call the work pillar. It's about living your life's purpose. And for several years, I have coached women in earning more money by using, by monetizing, by spreading their God-given gifts in this world. And oftentimes I find that although I say chase purpose, not money, people don't always have the game plan to pursue their purpose fully. And that is what I teach women how to do. I teach them how to build a platform. And so I'm highlighting women again in honor of National Entrepreneurship Week. And today we are talking to Faith Joyner. Faith is a relationship and trauma recovery counselor dedicated to helping women understand their power to create and maintain thriving relationships by redefining love on their terms. Being a survivor of childhood sexual abuse, Faith understands how trauma impacts us to our core. Our decisions, behaviors, and thinking patterns are affected by things that happen to us along our life journey. Faith is an advocate for building healthy relationships and uses her professional experience and personal knowledge of heartbreak to help women cultivate loving and fulfilling relationships. Without further ado, here's my girl, Faith Joyner. Welcome to the Redefining Wealth podcast, Faith. Thank you so much, Patrice, for having me. Thank you for being here. And I know everyone can't see you, but I'm looking at you and you just, you look scrumptious. <laughs> yes, you look amazing. Okay, so I guess I want to start with first, how did you stumble upon the Redefining Wealth podcast? 
So before I even begin, can I just say thank you for inviting me on? I, this is just another example of how gracious you are to the people that's in this program. So I really mm-hmm. appreciate you inviting me on to speak. But I stumbled upon your podcast. I had just had a falling out with some business partners and I was extremely depressed, like could not get out of the bed, did not want to counsel at the time I was doing individual therapy, did not want to work or anything, extremely depressed from this fallout. And one of my girlfriends has sent me your podcast. And I thought that she was sending me like a pastor's sermon or something, which I was hot about because I'm like, this is not what I need right now, right? This is not <laughs> what I need. And I do not want to hear no pastor talk about, you know, keep hanging on, keep hoping, all this other stuff, right? And so it took a day or two for me to actually open it because I'm like, you know what? I know my friends and my friends know me. And so I'm going to trust that she sent me something that would be encouraging, Mm -hmm. something that I really do need to hear. And so I listened to you and it was about accountability. The, The topic was about accountability and it blew me away because everything you were talking about in that episode was everything I had just experienced with these group of women. And it encouraged me because I was able to, to leave those relationships with integrity. Mm-hmm. And that's huge to me. Having integrity is huge to me. And so that's what attracted me to your podcast. And then when you said that you coach women, I was like, oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> so I went on to your website, saw that you had a program and signed up for my discovery call. Oh, that's awesome. I do remember that. I remember hearing that story on your podcast. Yeah. For Love Only. You told a snippet of that story and you're like, don't be sending me no sermon. <laughs> I, was so hot. I was so upset. Yeah. I was already hurting, right? So it was yeah. anything that anyone said at the time was just it was just me spilling. Yeah. Just- yeah. So let's go back. Cause you said that you were doing one-on-one counseling and you, you didn't feel like counseling at that time. So what were you doing when I met you What as a business? So as a business, I was doing individual and marriage counseling mm-hmm. privately. Right. So that's what I did. And I also hosted conferences and workshops for women. Um, specifically at the time I hosted workshops and conferences for wives. Mm -hmm. So my organization at the time was called for wives only. Right. So that was something separate, but I also, um, like I said, did private counseling. And then you ended up getting into purpose to platform Mm -hmm. and well, what made you decide to go ahead? Cause I, I understood it later that you had experienced coach hurt before. Yes. So what made you trust another coach and and try again with another program? Well, the episode that I listened to when you were talking about accountability and you were talking about the integrity and you were talking about how not to chase money, but to chase purpose, that really resonated with me because a lot of my previous mentors, they chased money Mm -hmm. and they hid behind the guise of their religion. They hid behind the guise of, oh, I'm doing this to help people. But behind closed doors, I saw what was really going on. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you spoke a language to me via your podcast that resonated with my heart. And so I was like, oh, okay, that's a person with integrity. Right. So then when we did the discovery call, you (laughs) you weren't trying to hustle me. Right. It was just like, this is what the program is. This is how much it is. Do you want to be a part of it? Do you think this will change your life? Basically. Mm -hmm. And I had to make a decision within myself to say, yes, I do think this will change my life. And I, again, connected with the fact that you weren't trying to hustle me. And there wasn't like a high pressure sales tactic. (laughs) That we've all experienced, right? I've experienced that a lot. Yeah. And so you weren't trying to manipulate my feelings during that discovery call. You weren't trying to belittle me or make me feel inferior to you. You did not come across as faith. If you don't 
come to this program, you'll be nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can't stand that that tactic. But and you know that it exists, right? Oh, absolutely. I've experienced it. Exactly. And so that's what made me take comfort and to trust you um, just by that discovery call that we did together. So it's so funny though, because I think a lot of people's experience of me may be that like, you know, they can tell that I'm, I, cause like I always tell people, I am who I am on and off stage, on and off line, on and off this mic. Like I, I am who I am, but I think through the lens of the podcast, people don't always know that as a coach, I still can be a little aggressive in terms of pushing you for more. I think they think I'm like way laid back and I'm like, no, I'm also the coach just like, you're going to stop charging $2. Right now, because we <laughs> now you show up in excellence, but but I always stress that right. I want you to charge what your worth and what your value is when you are putting the people first and you are showing up in excellence and you are doing what you say you're going to do, not being half butt about it and then trying to double and triple fees. I don't play that, and that is what I'm very big on in you know on our calls and in our community. So I would like to hear though, um, you know, what were some points of clarity that you got as you went through purpose to platform? Because we did have pushing back about numbers and dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say this? I don't think I know what you mean by that, by you being aggressive. I don't think you're aggressive. I think you're assertive. Yes. And I think you are direct and honest. And a lot of people, if they're not at a mature place in their lives, they don't know how to take that. So they may see it as aggressiveness. Um, but yes. I didn't see it as aggressiveness. On our um, discovery call, when I told you how much I was charging, when I told you how much I was making, because you want to know how much I was making, and um, you, you was quiet for a little bit, and then I kept talking. And then when I was finished talking, you were like, okay, so you're not running a business. You're running a campaign. I was like, oh, what? <laughs> I'm not even in a program yet, man. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> and so that was a, that was a truth bomb for me. You weren't nasty about it. Like I said, you weren't superior about it or anything. It was, that was that's facts. Mm-hmm. Right. An awareness campaign. You just want people to know I'm out here, but you you don't want them to know I'm here and I expect to be paid. <laughs> like, I'm just I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And so when I went through the program, the accountability that you required of me was so key and it was so instrumental to me having um, successful events and to me getting paid what I was worth Mm -hmm. because my services bring value not only to my client, but to generations. I have plenty of clients whose mothers want to meet me because of their daughter's transformation. Mm -hmm. I have plenty of clients who um, their children would not experience what they experience because they've learned how to transform their mind and also transform their actions. So in the program, when you will go through my numbers and you will challenge me. And it was really hard. I'm not going to try to front. It was really hard. My, my stomach was sink all the time. And there were certain things I knew I couldn't even say to you. I was like, <laughs> no, I already know what you're going to say. Right. And so, but it really transformed the way that I thought about myself because I lacked confidence in that area. I was very insecure in that area. I was intimidated in that area and the insecurity and the intimidation and undercharging people actually brought me to a place of burnout, mm-hmm. right? And so when you, um, through the, the online courses and through the interactions with you, our private sessions, and also in our group, helped me accountable to um, my value and my worth because I put in a lot of training. I'm a trained therapist, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> so... I continue my training and knowing how to handle trauma and knowing how to handle group dynamics. Like that's something that I invest in for myself, even to the point where with, I had two, well, I had three retreats last year, two of them I undercharged, right? Two of them I undercharged. By the time I got into Purpose the Platform, 
we were revamping my prices and you were just appalled by the prices that I had already <laughs> that I already charged people. And because I had increased the prices based on the value, right? Just like you saying, I am showing up every day. This is a therapeutic setting. These mm-hmm. people had a professional chef. My guests had a holistic approach. There's meditation. There's, um, I'm going to add a yoga component, but there was meditation. We do role playing, right? Cause it's not enough to just talk about it. You got to be about it. Right. Yeah. So because I increased the, the price of my, um, October retreat, um, the October retreat was able to pay for some of the items that I needed for the September retreat. Right. Mm-hmm. But the, the retreat I had previously undercharged for. So not only did it pay for the October retreat and the September retreat, but I was also able to pay my team. Right. Because that's a part of the value that you're getting in the retreat as well. When you come into the home, it's beautiful. Yeah. Chef, a event planner, all that stuff. Like there's so much value that's into my retreats for these women. So not only was I able to pay for the cost of the retreat, but also pay my team and also have money left over for myself because I got a light bill too. Hello. I got rent. (laughs) I like to eat. Yes. All of those, (laughs) all of the things, right? (laughs) Absolutely. Um, And you know, that that's amazing because one of my favorite affirmations is I deserve to be wealthy because of the value I add to others. Yes. And I have to keep reminding myself of that every time because we go through this in the calls. Now that you've been in the program a while and you see new people, and you're like, oh, I know I know what's about to happen here. Yeah. I know you're just watching. Right. Because people are thinking like, but I just want to help. You're still helping. Right. Like charging people doesn't mean that you're not helping. You're still helping. I would have done you a disservice to not charge you to be in purpose to platform because you would not have taken your transformation seriously. I agree 1000%. You know, I could give it away for free all day and people would not take it seriously, show up every Friday and do the work. They wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So who does that serve? It doesn't serve us or the client, Mm -hmm. right? One of the things that I really have loved about watching your transformation Yes. One thing that I really love, and your husband was on the podcast just last week, and Jamal actually talked about uh, the quiet confidence that he that he saw you. I remember when you sent that to me, and I just was like, oh, like he said he noticed a quiet confidence. The other thing was the clarity that you got around the, the women you wanted to serve, because you said you started out with For Wives Only, but now your podcast is For Love Only. So can you talk to us about how you made the distinction and the pivot and why that was so important for you? Sure. So Four Wives Only was a group that was based upon, you know, just regular within the range of normal issues that you will face in a marriage, right? So, you know, you don't like the way he cleaned the dishes. He need to pick up his clothes. You will have a communication issue, stuff like that. Um, but as I went on with this group, I learned that a lot of women were not happy in their marriages. A lot of women were miserable and a lot of women were dealing with what I call the four A's. They were dealing with abuse, addiction, affairs or abandonment in their marriage. And I could not speak to those women like I could speak to um, the women who were not dealing with that. And so as my audience grew, more of these women um, who were struggling with their confidence, these women are depressed, they're anxious, they have sleepless nights, um, they have crying spells, they're physically and emotionally exhausted from dealing with relationship betrayal, which is a form of trauma, right? Mm -hmm. We don't see that in the, especially in the, in the black community, but it is a form of trauma. So these women are dealing with that. And as my audience was growing up, I realized, you know what? It's not about being a wife, right? It's not about a title. It's about how you define love and how you want to show up in your relationship and how you want your partner to show up in your relationship. So what I do is I help women 
understand their power to create and maintain a thriving relationship um, by redefining love on their terms, right? So it's not how your mama define love. It's not how your pastor define love, not even how society define love. How do you define love and how do you want to show up in your relationship because of that? And so I really had to transition because my audience was growing and more of my audience was in that <laughs> mm-hmm. population of dealing with relationship betrayal and actually wanting to heal from some of the past trauma that they've experienced as well. And so I grew with my audience, which was really hard. I, that was really hard for me to let go of for wives only. As you all yeah. know, I tried on our call. <laughs> <laughs> Patrice was like, Faith, just take a breath. Get something to drink. I'm like boohoo crying. <laughs> it, it was extremely hard because I, I grew, you know, to love these women. I truly mm-hmm. love about the women that I love the women that I serve. Mm-hmm. And we were able to remind you that by really getting clear about your niche and who you were really trained and called to serve, you weren't completely abandoning everyone else. They could still learn right? Possibly how to avoid some of these telltale signs. And you have such amazing episodes on your, on your podcast, right? But you, they were still being served. If you're a wife, you can still be served, but it was amazing to see you embrace it reluctantly, but you did. And when you reintroduced your podcast, yes, what was the response? Oh my gosh. Um, women came out of everywhere I mean even wives came out of everywhere and they were just so happy that I changed it <laughs> they were just like, they felt included right yeah. because a lot of the women that I help they're getting out of their marriages right they don't even want to be considered a wife right now right ah. because they're still dealing with the trauma they're still dealing with the betrayal right and so they felt excluded they love my information but if it was for wives only then they didn't feel included. Right. And so a lot of them were just like, thank you so much for being honest. Thank you so much for making that pivot. I feel included. You're so right. I need to define love. I've been basing love off of what my, I saw my parents do or what I saw my grandparents do or, you know, what society tells me to do. And I have not thought about love for myself. And that's something I'm huge on. You got to you, you have to know yourself for yourself, man. Mm-hmm. You know, get your life. Right. (laughs) It can't be because of what everybody else wants, but what you want. I was so proud of you. It was like one week she was like, I don't want to alienate the people, but how am I going? And I'm like, Faith, breathe. Just (laughs) tell them, (laughs) tell them I've been working with this group for so long, but this is what I'm seeing and it's time to pivot. Mm -hmm. And you went from I'm going to alienate them to literally expanding it and having people feel more seen, more heard more loved, yes. which, you know, I know is only making the retreats and everything else so much easier. I mean, it's not easy. Don't get me wrong to get yes. cheeks and seats. I know that it's not easy, yes. but when people already feel seen and heard and they know that you're their person, it's not a hard sell. Mm-hmm. So it's not getting on the phone and like, you're going to be nothing. You're going to die without me. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> if you've been consistently speaking to the needs of your people, then they hear you. They feel you. They already know this is my person. That's how I feel. So I don't, like you said, even on our call, I don't approach anything from it got to be me. I have more, I send more people to therapy than I agree to coach. Good I'm for like, you. you know what? Yeah. Because your business is only going to grow to the extent you are willing to heal. On, and I now. can give you all the tactics in the world. And I can tell you that you're brilliant and awesome. And I got your back and all this stuff over and over again. And if you have things that need to be healed, you shouldn't start with a business coach. You need to start with a therapist or a life coach or both. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's truly where. So we actually probably half the people that reach out to us about coaching. We don't even make an offer to to be in the program. And that's also because. I really hold purpose to platform as such a sacred space. Like you see, you know, every week someone new joins and people can just come into the fold and and they're like, wow, I'm so happy to be here. Right. Not like come in with drama and we don't do all that. And I appreciate that because 
the accountability that I receive and purpose the platform is not only from you, but it's from my com community members, right? Because community is really important. When you're an entrepreneur, like it is so hard. People play like it's easy and six figure this, six figure that, baby. This is this is hard. <laughs> this is many, you know, crying nights and you know, up all night and working on your platform. It's it's extremely hard. And so I appreciate the accountability that you've given me and the encouragement and accountability that my sisters and platform has given me as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what advice do you have for anyone? You just said entrepreneurship is hard. Get you some <laughs> accountability, right? Do you have any advice for anyone who may even be looking to start a business in a space like yours where it's sensitive? You serve, you know, women who've been through trauma mm -hmm. um, or who may be in the midst of trauma even still. And, you know, they have no idea where to start, what to do. Is there uh, like any words of wisdom that you would just provide? Absolutely. I would absolutely positively advise anyone getting into business to get a business coach. Like, I wish I had purposed a platform when I first started this platform three years ago. I would not have lost as much money. I would not have experienced so much pain. Um, I would not have been involved with certain people I wasn't supposed to be involved with. And I would not have listened to people who did not successfully run a business. That's so key to get connected to someone, which is why I wanted to connect with you, Patrice, is because you were successfully running a business, mm -hmm. right? And so I think it's really important to get accountability and to invest in yourself, which means you're going to have to pay some money, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're going to you're gonna have to pay some money, boo-boo. You're going to have to pay some money and invest in yourself to, to stay accountable and to, to get the support. You need so much support as an entrepreneur. You, you need will. so much support and to get the support that you need. So that's my advice. I love it. I agree wholeheartedly. And to your point, I wish I had purpose to platform when I started, <laughs> you know, 10, 11 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, because I ended up essentially creating what I wish I had along the way without all the foolishness mm -hmm. and the cattiness and the, mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you because you may take my stuff like we just, you know, we just share so openly um, in that group. And it's just, uh, it's beautiful to watch. It's beautiful to see the support. And I'm just so grateful that I get to serve women like you because I know that at your retreats, you are transforming lives. And to know that um, I got to help you and yeah. that passes on, like, I just feel like all the women in Purpose the Platform, I get to be a part of that indirectly and doing really great work in the world and reminding us all that you can be purposeful and profitable and you don't have to uh, chase money to mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do that. And that's just my big thing. Like, it's possible. <laughs> you don't have to do this. I just feel like I need to get on a mountaintop with a megaphone. Like, you don't have to go this way. You right. Know? Um, so it's, it's been my honor to watch your journey. I'm so glad I got to chat with your husband and he just adores you and is so proud of you and everything you've done. And, um, thank you for being in this community. It wouldn't have been the same without you. You've added so much. Thank you for allowing me. Cause I know everybody can't get in. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for trusting me to be a part of this community. Thank you. I appreciate it. Y'all get into purpose, the platform. This this is this is going to change your life, not only professionally, but personally as well. All right. Did you learn something from Faith? Is she not freaking amazing? I am telling you, I have the honor of serving such phenomenal women. Oh. Like she blows me away when she first talked to me about those four A's. Did you hear that? The four A's, abuse, addiction, affairs, abandonment, and how she is just helping heal women, heal their relationships, not just with others, but with themselves first. 
that For Love Only podcast is the bomb. You need to look up For Love Only Courageous Conversations. If you find yourself in any one of those four A's, I encourage you to check out Faith and her retreats. She's really the real deal. And it has been my honor to hold her accountable to being this version of herself. Like her husband said last week on the podcast episode where I interviewed a few of the husbands, right? Love looks like support. You know, he got to see her come back to herself, her strength, her power, uh, her confidence, being a part of Purpose to Platform. And I'm so glad that she's been able to step up and move past that coach hurt that she experienced so that she could really really be this woman that you just heard. I just literally adore her. So like Faith said, if you were interested in a community, if you are looking for accountability, if you are looking for a genuine coach and not someone who's going to try to push you to chase money and create things just for the money, not because they truly add value to you or the platform or the audience, then I welcome you to give us a call. It is a no high pressure call. I truly don't feel like those tactics are necessary. And it's funny, I tell people all the time, maybe my business could be double what it is. It might be able to be triple what it is, but I don't believe in gimmicks and tricks. If you know that you are called to serve in a mighty way and you are literally looking for community, encouragement, a game plan, a sincere coach, and you want to increase your influence, impact, and income with integrity, then all it is is a matter of, are we a fit? If we're a fit, then we welcome you into the community. If it's not a fit, we're okay with saying it's not a fit as well. And possibly redirecting you to someplace that might be a fit if we're not. So it's it's none of the high pressure sales stuff. That's not what I do. That's not what I allow my team to do. <laughs> I'm not even selling you anything. I see it as an opportunity to serve, Right. Like, here is how I can serve you. And if you feel like this will be beneficial to your life and take you to the next level and help you get there sooner, quicker, faster, instead of spinning around in circles and cycles of confusion, when you have a community that can support you on getting on a clear path, then I'm down. And that it's literally as simple as that. So if you're interested, patricewashington.com forward slash talk patricewashington.com forward slash talk would love to support you if you are ready if you are ready to be committed and feel like it's a fit let's see all right that's it until tomorrow i want you to go live your life's purpose find fulfillment and earn more without ever chasing money happy national entrepreneurship week